there's much more in this picture than just a tableau of nudes, without doubt. Um, what it is is uh, a story taken from the Roman poet Ovid, and in fact it's probably his most poignant and gruesome tale. It tells the story of the young hunter Actian, who suddenly finds himself almost by mistake in the sacred grotto of Diana, who of course was the chaste virgin goddess of the hunt and of the moon. He accidentally arrives there and in this moment of great drama sees uh, these voluptuous nymphs and it must have been a wondrous vision to him but at the same time that gesture where he raises his hands in horror he knows that his number is up and that his fate is sealed. Titian is so brilliant because every single face and body in this picture tells a story. He uses the figures to convey emotion and drama and passion. So I think that Diana um, is very much caught in a moment of disarray and um, she is shamed and humiliated by the arrival of this very virile, very um, strong young hunter at a moment when she is taking her bath and indeed is in a position that makes her very, very vulnerable with one leg raised as it's being toweled dry and um, she's completely exposed. At the best of times, Diana um, was not available for um, audiences, least of all by men. But um, to be caught in this position was a terrible thing for her. And that explains this extraordinary sidelong glance, as if looks could kill. And she, in that moment, um, is going to exact, she is thinking of the revenge that she'll take on Actium. There are portents rippling through this picture which tell already Actian's terrible fate in which he is turned into a stag and ripped pieces by his own hounds, the very hound that is so obediently at heel in the painting will in the end be um, his assailant and, and murderer. So it is a very dramatic moment and in the painting you can see for example, the death's head, the skull, Diana's trophy of her former prey, and also above her head, the skins um, of previously flayed victims. And there in the distance, you can also see Diana uh, toiling up the hill after a stag. These, of course, are all looking forward to Actian's uh, violent destruction by her. I think Titian has put a lot of very personal um, motifs into this painting. So in the background, for example, we see these beautiful blue hills, which are probably the Dolomites from where he came. He grew up um, in Venice and indeed never really left Venice as a painter. And so in the forefront of the painting is this beautiful still water of Diana's grotto which is almost mirror-like and in it are caught all the reflections of the shady grotto and beautiful nature. The background is like a painting by Bellini so um, it's looking back to his past and these wonderful details of the glass vase um, which was known as Murano glass and indeed which were sent to Philip in the same consignment as the painting. Um, this was like a signature piece and in it um, Titian has made it with the brightest white in the whole painting so it absolutely catches our eye. Then it's reflected in the nymph's mirror and then further down into the water and so it's this marvellous sort of magical sense of atmosphere that Titian is capable of evoking.